Good morning and welcome to Nats LA. So great to see everyone again. This is the first time we've been together live for two years. So, and to mark this uh, um, occasion, we have an amazingly special program that you're all here for. We're so grateful to have with us Susan Graham. Well, amazing. <laughs> you know, we. We just, we all, we all, you know, love your voice and love your personality, and we're just so, so thrilled that you're here with us Thank today. You. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I think we're just going to go ahead and get started. Singers have been here for a while, they're warmed up, ready to go. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is so fun. What a nice way to spend a Saturday. Hi, y'all. Come on in. Have a seat. Um... So, everybody who's here to sing today, raise your hand. Look at that. That's awesome. All right. Who's in high school? Good. Who's in college? Good. Who's in grad school? Okay. All right. Good. That's a nice breakdown. I'm Susan Graham. I am an opera singer. That sounds like the beginning of like a confession. <laughs> My name is Susan. I'm an opera singer. Um, I'm in, currently in recovery, however, but um, from being an opera singer. I've been singing opera for, golly, over 30 years. And um, I've sung about every place on the planet that has opera and symphony orchestras all over the place. So it might not surprise you to know that along the way, I've learned a little bit. Um, and so my goal today is to impart some of what I've learned to you guys. To the singers, hi, come on in. Have a seat. To the singers, I want to help you unlock some of the mysteries of the music that you're addressing and, and starting to learn or perfecting. And for everybody here who's not a singer, you get to see how the sausage gets made. Because there's a lot that goes on. I mean, my, I have a feeling that most everybody here is either a teacher or a parent or something, you know, very closely connected with, with the world of singing. So you already know how the sausage gets made. But there are many different kinds of sausage, as it turns out. And um, so, oh, is that a phone? Or a string quartet in the background? Um, so anyway, um, we're just going to have fun today. I want everybody to just have relax, have a good time. We're going to be very informal. And sometimes what we're going to do isn't pretty because sometimes opera's just not pretty. And on that topic, I will say that, you know, everyone always asks me how I like those HD, you know, the, the camera, camera opera, I like to call it. And while it is a great thing, and for, <laughs> for those of you who are watching, they said there were cameras here today. I don't know where they are, but I trust that they're going to make us all look good. But however, I will just say that sometimes singing is not a spectator sport, especially when you're going for high notes and the camera feels like it's right here. So anyway, that's my, that's my rant on, on HD opera singing. Um, but we love how, how it brings people to what we do, and we love the exposure that it gives us. And also today, we love the fact that we can bring this class to people who were not able to be here with us in person. So, on that happy note, who's my first victim? Yes, excellent, thank you. Now, when, when you guys come up here, every time that you speak, uh, I'm told that you need to have this handheld mic in your hand for, so that the live stream people can hear us and so that, you know, you don't have to yell. So, welcome. Hi, I'm Ryan Liddy, and I'm going to be singing Sten Hien by Schubert. Fantastic. Now, I want you to, maybe you can sort of park yourself there-ish and sort of angle towards me so I can sort of not completely, you know, take them in too, but, but yeah, so that I can sort of be in on the magic.
Um, so how do you feel? Are you nervous? I am very nervous. You're very nervous? Okay, do for me this. I can't do it with my microphone. Anyway, do for me this. <sighs> Just take in deep breaths. You're not breathing. Breathe it. Breathe, breathe, breathe. And then blow it out. Good. Twist your whole torso. Good. Give him one bar. Let him start the beginning. One bar. Lies of You just say the, say the first line for me. Leise flehen, meine Lieder. Yeah. Now, why did you say meine Lieder, but you sang meine Leder, which means my leather, <laughs> not my song, right? Okay, so try it again. I always like to talk about vowels in primary colors. Now, as singers, we often have to modify vowels if they're in sort of a difficult part of the voice, but I don't think that's a difficult note for you. So I think you can say, Liza Flehen, meine Lieder, Lieder, not Lieder, but Lieder. Can you say that for me? Lieder. Exactly. Will you start it again for me? Yeah. Flehen, meine Lieder. Now, Lieder, say for me, Lieder. 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 Now, you're, you're, can you can you can you imagine for me? Sing for me. <laughs> Say e. I don't care if it's pretty. E. <laughs> can you can go more e? You spoke more e. 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 <laughs> That's much better. That's much better. Now say, uh, how's, uh, what are the notes on minor leader? Uh, now just sing that. Minor leader. And when you get up to the top, I want you to just, this is just an experiment. Just give me the e e s t e you have. Minor okay. leader. That's much better because you know, even when you think you're going e, it's just about the right balance. Yeah. yeah? Good. Now, because, because as singers, what do we have that nobody else has? Words. So we got to make the most of those words, right? And it helps if they're, you know, pronounced correctly. That's a good start. Uh, and then you, what's, what's the next verse? I mean, what's the next phrase? In den stillen Hein hernieder. There's lots of E's, right? Yeah. Keep that in mind as you go into the second phrase, too. Start again for me. Just uh, one bar, please. Thank you. Exactly. Now, how does that feel? Perfect. Yeah? It feels connected? Good. So why were you doing it the other way? <laughs> trying to make space. It's sort of a natural tendency for us to try to make space. But sometimes we need it, and sometimes we don't. It's not super high for you. It's not like you're singing like a high B flat or something. So that's excellent. And your voice lines up better, and it all sounds like more, more one piece. One voice. Yeah? yeah? Good. Keep going. I love this. 
We're at Flüstern Schlanke. Flüstern Schlanke. Oh, sorry. In den Stillen. Oh, okay. In den Stillen. Ah, 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 ah. You went back. Neder Stillen. Stillen, Stillen, Herr Nieder, Nieder. Try it again. In den Stillen. Be brave. In den Stillen. What's the word? In den. Yeah. In den Stillen. In den Stillen. Good. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Good. Keep going. Good. singing, just listen to that music and let it inform what you're about to do. Tönen. Can we start there? A little more, be, be a little more primary colors with those vowels. Let me know what they are. Good. So, so this is like another chapter, right? The music changes completely. There's a little more excitement going. So I want you to give me even more textual energy. Also, that'll go with, that'll go with the, the change in the musical energy. So right here. Uh, yeah. Last. Good. Entgegen, entgegen. Do that one again. Do that one again. Uh, on the uh, yeah, one bar before Baben. Good. That's better. What does "Komm beglücke mich" mean? Yes, yes, make me happy. Oh, make me happy. The glucomish, yeah. Um, so, and, and we're, you know, this is the last line that you sing in the song. Yeah. So this is the, the denouement, the climax of the thought of the poem. Yeah, kom beglucomish. 
So I want you to mean it with every fiber of your being. And you know how we can mean words even harder is by saying, like if you have a word like Glück, to put a little tiny shadow vowel between the G and the L, whenever you have two, uh, two consonants together, a G and an L, we don't want to be Glück, Glück. We want to uh, pronounce it so that everyone can hear it. So it's Glück. So Komm beglück, beglück mich. Komm beglück mich. Yeah, it, it actually is. It happens by itself when you're just thinking about wanting to make the words very clear. Very clear. <laughs> okay, uh, give me, give me two bars, please, before Komm beglück mich. Good. Now a little more energy. Good. Now can you say U up there? Calm, because it's an umlaut U. And how do we say an umlaut U? It's not U. It's not U. Uh. It's technically U with an E inside your mouth. U. Now that's hard to do on a high note. So I'll let you open it up a little bit. But I don't want glucka. Okay, the glück, the glück. You can still hear that there's an umlaut in there, yeah? So you can do that too. Okay. Uh, do the, the, first, the first one. Take it up there, keep going. I would buy that. I would buy that. Very good. Very good. How much time do we have left? One minute. Okay. Uh, uh, what does this song mean to you? Just serenading your lover and talking about the connection to nature and yes. moonlight and stuff. Exactly. Moonlight and stuff. Um, <laughs> No, he's not wrong. Um, so when we have songs like this go, ti -a -ra -ta -ti, ta -ta -ra -ra -ta, the last word that I'll say is that our goal is to make it not be a series of notes, but a series of longer phrases. Do you happen to play the violin? I don't. Okay, me neither. However, <laughs> we like to think of, to, to, to find some legato in phrases like this that are kind of jumpy and kind of intervalley. We, we like to think of, of how a violin player does everything on one one bow. So, and rather than letting each note and each syllable dictate its own universe, yeah. Just start start it again for me, just with that in mind. So so that we'll have. Uh, what's what, I lost the key. What are, what key are we in? Yes. Leise flit meine Lieder. Leise fängt meine Lieder durch die Nacht zu dir. Okay, durch die Nacht. Go towards Nacht. Durch die Nacht zu dir. That makes it one phrase. Just start there. Durch die Nacht. No, 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 you got to grow on durch. Whenever we have a long note, do something on it. Okay, ready? Go. Good. Keep going. Same thing, one long thing. Good. Did you see he did something magic on Kom zu mir? Very good. Okay, I'm sorry, we have to stop now, but that's very good. Bravo, bravo. Good job. These all are going to go by so fast. I wish we had an hour for each one. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Very pretty green Thank dress. You. Hi, my name is Veka Saravanen, and I will be singing Si me vers ave de zelle by Anne. No, but hey, pick up the mic again. Tell us a little bit about your relationship with this song. 
Okay, so for me, this song is essentially about a breakup, so... Interesting. Yeah, so I am trying to convey my true feelings to this guy, which is that I don't like him. However, <laughs> I'm being very diplomatic about it. So I'm using all of these beautiful artistic metaphors to kind of avoid the fact and avoid saying it straightforward. Okay, tell us, give us a brief synopsis of what actually the text is. Okay, so si me vers avez des ailes means my verses shall fly, sweet and fragile. If my verses had wings. If my verses had wings, yeah. And we go on to talk about, it gets more intense, I think, in the second verse where we talk about um, if my verses, if um, my verses had sparks, and then we go on to saying how um, if my love is pure and faithful, and we end with talking about how the verses are similar to love. Now, I'm curious how you got to break up with this. It's fascinating. I love this. This is what I love about music and poetry, because you can interpret it any way you want, and I'm terribly curious. Okay, so I feel like this song is kind of talking about how, like, the wonders I would feel with someone else, but I'm not feeling them, I'm not feeling it with that one person. But you're saying, if my words had wings, they would fly to your garden, so sweet and lovely. Yeah. And they would, if they were sparks, they would fly to your hearth. And uh, if, which maybe, maybe it means that they would set your house on fire. <laughs> Maybe that's the goal. <laughs> um, but to you, pure and faithful, they would hurry, they would rush night and day. I, my words would go to you. Yeah. She's talking about someone else, I think. She's okay. not addressing him. Okay, so she's singing this with bad guy over here and good guy over here. Exactly. Okay. That's fascinating. I love that. You know, Ronaldo Hahn wrote this. It was one of the first songs he wrote. I think he wrote it when he was like 11. Seriously. How did he know? He didn't write the poem, though. But um, isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is. Like Mozart writing operas when he was like five. five. Anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. This is one of my favorite songs. I love this. And like we were talking a minute ago um, with Ryan, this is one of those that long bows, long phrases, yeah? Because Ronaldo Hahn writes the accompaniment almost like a harp. So you have to sort of ride long phrases on that harp. Good. I can help you from that first one. I've sung this song before, so I know it's tricks. Instead of never think, yeah? So go from one word always into the next. Good. Try again. Breathe. Now, really long. French? I do not. You could have fooled me. Your French is quite good. Thank you. Do you speak breathing? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Um, no, we can, we can work on your breathing a little bit. May I touch you? Okay, so when you take a, just take a breath for me into my, into my thumbs, into my thumb. You can do better. Wait, put your thumbs here on my waist. Feel that yeah. expansion? I, I want you to I want you to think about that too. Ready? Go. That's better. That's much better. Yeah. Okay, now try. Put your own hands on your ribs. On your ribs, a little higher. Turn around like this. Yes. Now fill up your hands. Yes. Good. Good, good, good. Start again with that. Yes. Good. Keep going. 
to just have something to ride on, yeah. have the tone ride on that air, yeah? So, vers votre foyer, vers votre foyer qui You want to you arch, make the space all the way up to that high note. Vers votre foyer qui Sorry, I'm shedding. Um, to, to, sort of, to sort of frisbee that sound out. And it's going right up there. We're not actually going to hit the stained glass window with our frisbee, but we're aiming it up there. Yeah? Yeah. See it with me. Ver votre foyer Yes. Yes, do it again. By yourself this time. Fling it out. Go, 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 go. And you can't stop. You can't stop when you get to the easy phrase that goes, that descends. Just as much energy when we descend as when we ascend. Okay, ready? So you did a great job up there. Now start it. Just as much energy, like you're going up to a high note, even though you're going to a lower note. Okay? Right there. We say the word C O M M E, it's a hard one to pronounce because it's not com, it's not cam, it's cum. Uh uh uh. I had a French teacher once who said she she had a French accent, so she said, Oh Suzanne, what is that um that soft drink that is not Coca-Cola, not Dr. Pepper, but it's clear? I said seven up. She says, Yes, seven up, 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 uh 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 cum. Yes. So um, let's go back and catch that. Um, si me vers ave des ailes, ca. Can you just say it down there? Ca. Ca. Uh, uh, uh. Make a little more poker. Ca. Uh huh. That's good. That's good. You feel the shape of it? It's a little bit different, isn't it? Si me vers. Good. And l'esprit is one of those words that we love yeah. because it's a special word. L'esprit. And it's a puri, 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 like uh, gala a minute ago. Galuk. Yeah. Esprit. Esprit. That same French teacher called that a little a petit trampoline. It's like, a little, it's like a little lift between the consonants. Yeah. Come on, esprit. Because it lets us know that it's a really special word. Just start there again. Come, that's good. You got the vowel right. Come on, esprit. Good. With energy. Right this is another one of those. This is another one of those that has to be a long, say it for me in a long legato phrase, just the text. Excellent. Now Merci. sing it. Je vous en prie, <laughs> mademoiselle. Now, let's sing it just with that same kind of legato. And it all comes from here, yeah? Keep going. Now, not il s'accourre, il s'accourre, il s'accourre. Yeah? Good. You can do that. Il s'accourre, il t'accourre. No 
sliding, no sliding, no sliding. Do it, start seeing me there again. Now I want you to do that again. That was beautiful. You fixed that. Now let's take a breath so that we can have energy all the way through that phrase. Ready? Take a nice deep breath. Nah, ah, ah, ah. Breathe with me. Ready? No, nope, you got to start it with the same energy. You're kind of going, you're kind of relaxing a little bit too much on those easy phrases, which is very easy to do because we go, ah, oh, this one is low, it's easy. See, mm -mm. Everything has to have the same, the same energy. It's like when you're, whether you're going in a straight line or whether you're going uphill and you're driving a car, if you take your foot off the gas, it won't, even if you're going straight, it'll eventually come to a stop. So I need to have your foot on the gas. Okay, uh, let's start back at. Keep your foot on the gas. That's lovely. Yeah. How does it feel? It feels better. Good. Yeah. It, when we have the engine actually working, it makes everything easier because yeah. otherwise it just feels like it's from here up. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? Practice breathing. Yes. And did you, we, we only addressed the final schwa vowel one time, but you fixed it. Comme, uh, 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 those final um, schwa vowels in French need to go forward a little bit, not come, uh, but come. Uh. You see the, the cheeks go up a little yeah. bit, the mouth puckers a little bit. And if you want to practice that when you're singing or when you're speaking, you can just do it exactly what you're doing now. You can lift your cheeks. You can pull your, pull your mouth into a pucker. I say that when you're learning French, it's always helpful to pull your mouth into a pucker. Nearly every word can benefit from that. Okay. Bravo! Very well so done. Much. Very well done. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm just dandy. Good. Having a good time. And you are? I'm Evan Richards, and today we will be performing This Is My Box, an aria from A Mall and the Night Visitors by Giancarlo Minotti. Good. Now, tell me a little bit about your relationship with this piece. Are you, have you sung it before? Have you performed it? Are you just learning it? What's the deal? Yeah, so I've performed it a few times. I've done it for college auditions and stuff. And in this song, I am King Kaspar. I am one of the three wise men who comes to visit Amal. He's like a little shepherd boy's house. Are you gold, frankincense, or myrrh? I'm all three, baby. That's, <laughs> all Kaspar three. has everything. Okay, good And to know. he's showing... He's showing them all this, and he's like, but you can't have it, but this is what I have. Like, these are my wares. He's like, so, it's, it's, he's just a fun little quirky old guy who forgets stuff, so. Okay, yeah, good. That's who I am. <laughs> this is my box, this is my box. I never travel without my books. The first floor I keep my magic stones, one plumbing in against all evil in envy, one stone to make you sleep, one red claw to heal your wounds, one who set me against caught in fever, one small chasper to help you find water, one small topaz to soothe your eyes. This is my box, this is my box, I never travel without my box. In the second drawer I keep all my beads, oh how I love to play with beads, all kinds of beads. This is my box, this is my box, 
rocks. I never travel without my box in the third drawer. Okay, this is fun, right? You have a good time doing this, obviously. Now, when, <clears throat> when we sing in English, that's a whole other kind of consideration. Because it's our native tongue, most of us, when we sing in English, we sometimes imagine that we are being clearer than we sometimes are. So I want you to start this again like you're singing for a room full of five-year-olds who don't speak English, okay? That means that you can't say, this is my box, this is my box. You need to say, this is my box, this is my box. Every little syllable. We can't take anything for granted, darn it. The great thing about singing in our mother tongue is that we can make the emotional connection to the words immediately. We don't have to go through a translation and think, oh, well, well, in German, this word means softly, but does it, and sometimes it means sweetly, so I don't know which one it is. We know immediately in English because it's, it's the language we live in. So for that reason, pretend that none of these people speak English and that you have to over-enunciate. Thank you. This is my box, this is my box. I never travel without my box. Good. In the first drawer, I keep my. In the first what? In the, in the first drawer. In the first drawer. Drawer is such an ugly word to sing, isn't it? It's okay, it goes by very fast, but make sure we understand it. And try to say first drawer. In the first drawer. Yes. Okay. Right there on that bar. And a one. In the first row, ah, ah, try again. You weren't quite ready. Take a good breath. In the first row, I keep my magic stones. One card. My what? I, I keep. I keep my what? Magic stones. Yeah, for our purposes, we have to say magic stones. We can't say magic stones. Magic stones. Magic stones. Magic stones. Yes, sir. Yes. In the first drawer. In the first drawer, I keep my magic stones. Yes. One carnelian against all evil and empty. One stone to make you sleep. One red cork to heal your wounds. Okay, that, it, it starts to get a little choppy, choppy and, and difficult. Choppy is okay in, for, this, for this exercise. However, I need to hear one, one, one of all of the different things that you're saying so that. Again, we don't take any of these words for granted. Start at one carnelian against all evil and envy. Evil and envy. Evil and envy. Yeah? One carnelian. One carnelian. Give me a C. Carnelian. One carnelian. One carnelian against all evil and envy. Good. One stone to make you sleep. One red cock to heal your wounds. Good. One red what? Coral. Coral. Two syllables. Coral. 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 Can you say coral? Coral. <laughs> I'm getting kind of an amalgamation of one fat syllable. Coral. 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 Can you say an L? Coral. Yeah. Coral. Coral. Side story. My father was a geophysicist. And, um, which means he was in the oil business. I had a Dutch boyfriend who came to visit and I wanted to teach my Dutch boyfriend how to say oil business in Texan. <laughs> oil business. Because he was not a Texan, he couldn't say oil business. So let's pretend that you're not American and you can't say coral. You're going to say coral, like someone who had learned English recently. 
don't know why I told that Dutch boyfriend story. But oil business, oil business you know. Uh, so coral, coral, say it for me again. Coral. Give me the final L. Coral. When we say L's, they don't happen back here. They happen in the very front. Say like you are Italian, coral. Coral. Ecco, bravo. Coral. Coral. That's good. Now we could put that little shadow vowel at the end of that too, couldn't we? Coral. Coral. There we go. Now I can understand it. Sounds like two syllables and sounds like English. Yay. Okay. So where did we end up? Yes. And it goes by fast, but try to incorporate it. Okay. Good. One red coral. Red coral. One red coral to heal your wounds. Try again. You got, you got tongue tied. But good, 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 good. One red coral to heal your wounds. Yes. One lapis lazuli. One what? Sorry, 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 sorry. One what? Lapis lazuli. Yes. Not lap lazuli. <laughs> lapis lazuli. Think of it like ta 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 ta. One lapis lazuli. Okay, try that. One lapis lazuli. Yes! Now why don't you do that all the time? I guess my tongue gets tired. <laughs> I don't think so. I think, I think, I think you're just in a habit. Yeah. Because sometimes, especially, especially when we've sung things a million times, as you say you have performed this quite a bit, we get a little L-A-Z-Y. Yes, autopilot, exactly. Because we're thinking it, and we think, if I think it hard enough, everybody will understand it. Not necessarily. They don't speak English. Okay, okay. Good. Start back at one red coral. That was beautiful. One red coral to heal your wounds. One lapis lazuli against court and fever. One small jasper to help. Wait, I... That's okay. It's That's okay. Class, right? No, it's Jasper. Oh. oh. Yeah. Okay. Just on the bar, please. One small Jasper to help you find water. Okay. One small topaz to soothe your eyes. One red ruby to protect you from light. Okay, good. This is good. You know, all those beautiful long phrases were lovely, and I understood every word. Now, when we get back to one red ruby. One red root. What, how is it? One red, red root. Ruby to protect you. Yes. And when you have to start down low again, again, energize just as much down there. Good. Beautiful. Um, just start there. From one. One red ruby. Okay. And, and red ruby. Red ruby. Yes, sir. One red ruby. It's okay. Start again. One red ruby to protect you from lightning. From this what? From lightning. It's an octave leap, so it's a little hard to articulate down there, but try. Okay. One red ruby. One red ruby to protect you from lightning. Light, no, no, I know what it is. You're, you make the vowel longer. Lightning. Lightning. There you go, instead of lightning. Do it again. That was great. One red ruby to protect you from lightning. Ah. Lightning. Lightning. Yeah, just let the vowel speak a little bit before we... I know it's a short note. Yeah. Fudge it a little so that we can hear it. All right. Good. One red ruby to protect from lightning. There you go. This is my box. This is my box. I never travel without my Now, because box. we say this is my box so many times, here we are, and I, I want you to try to elongate that vowel as well, just like lightning. This is my box. This is my box. Yeah, good. Okay. Start right there. This is my box. This is my box. I never travel without my box. And, 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 and give me those words. We don't speak English. Never travel without my box. Make your mouth work a little bit. There you go. This. This is my box, this is my box, I never travel without my box. Good. In the second drawer I keep all my beads, oh how I love to play with beads. That's good, I love that, I love that. Get a little crazy on that. Oh how I love to play with beads. Give me a little bit of that. Second drawer. Okay. 
Okay. In the second drawer I keep all my needs. Oh, how I love to play with beads. All kinds of beads. This is my box. This is my box. I never travel without my box. In the third drawer. In the third drawer. Oh, little boy. Can you, can you do that with just a little bit more ecstasy? Oh, because you know what's in there. <laughs> and you love it. And you're not going to get any. Oh, little boy. Just energize it before you start the note. And with the space. You can do those two, 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 you can do them differently. The two, the two are different. The first one is what? What's the expression of the first one? Oh, little boy. Oh, you don't know. And the second one is? Oh, you don't know. You don't know or you're not going to get it. Hey. Poor little thing. Poor little boy. Well, maybe I choose one. Maybe you do, but what is it there? What, what is in your mind right there on the second one? I'm going to show him. Oh, so, 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 oh, little boy, you're going to love this? Okay, well, d make a choice and let okay. me know what it is. Okay. Oh, oh, little boy. Oh, little boy. Now change. Oh, little boy. In the third drawer I keep. Licorice, licorice. Black sweet licorice, black sweet licorice. Have some. Thank you. Now, when you say, I know it's written licorice, it's, we say licorice. Yeah. Can you say licorice? Yeah. Do, do that. Do just the very end of it again. Licorice. Okay. Uh, 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 uh but, but give me a little run up to it. Okay. Uh, in the third drawer, I keep. The last one. Mm -hmm. In the third drawer, I keep. I'm going to take a big breath before you say it. Licorice, licorice. Black licorice, black licorice. Excellent, excellent. Good, good, good. You're all better. Thank you. Good. Does that feel better? Yes. We always just want it to be, and y'all will notice that when he started saying all the little words and the little syllables, again, everything became energized and everything fell into a line, which is very good. Bravo, you. Thank you. Good job. Hello. Hello everyone, I'm Jem Stacy Akabel. We will perform Tuwaik Nung by Richard Strauss. Now tell me, Jem, a yes. little bit about your relationship with this song. I have sung this song for, I was supposed to sing it for a jury, but they ended up not picking it. Mm -hmm. And I've had it since the fall of last semester. And when I think of this song, I think of gratitude and cheering somebody up which we all can use a lot of both of those things these days, can't we? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Do you speak German? No. <laughs> but you do in this song, right? Yes. Okay, I do. excellent. Can you just can you just pronounce for me the first couple of phrases? Ja, ja, du weißt es teure Seele, dass ich fern von dir mich quäle. Liebe macht die Herzen krank, habe Dank. Continuing? Sure. Okay. Eins hielt ich der Freiheit sicher. Hoch sicher. 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 Like pizza. Sicher. 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 Yeah. Sicher. Hoch. hoch den Amethysten Becher. Und oh, hoch den Amethysten. It's, it's like a umla. Tüsten. Tüsten. Mm -hmm. Amethysten Becher. 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 Mm -hmm. Hoch, äh, und du segnetest segnet den Trank. Habe Dank. Habe Dank. Ja. Ähm, und beschwörst. Und beschwörst darin die Bösen. Bis Ist ich beschwörst? I, there's not an Umlaut in my score. Und beschwörst. Und beschwörst mm -hmm. darin die Bösen. Mm -hmm. Bis ich was 
ich nie was ich nie gewesen mm -hmm. heilig heilig ans geherz dir sank ans herz dir sank ans herz dir sank mm -hmm. habe dank excellent very good very good thank you okay now when we're talking about strauss songs or strauss opera again in this type of music there's all kinds of strauss songs but in in this song in particular again those long lines one bow do you happen to play the violin yeah, I, awesome! I, I do, yes. <laughs> Good. So, so you know what I mean by that one long bow. So basically, when we connect the vowels of the syllables that we're singing, that means that there's just a tiny little punctuation of the consonants in between. That doesn't mean I don't want to hear the consonants, because I do. But we don't want to let it stop the connection of the vowels one from the other, right? Mm -hmm. So. Go ahead and begin this and think of connecting all of those words together, just punctuated by ends and beginnings of words. Now, also, we think about in German, how do we do that? Because it's such a highly consonated language. But we can do it. Yes, we can. Yes. Some of the most romantic songs in the repertoire are, are German, <laughs> surprisingly. Like we were just talking before uh, with Evan, there are small notes, most notably, we don't hop around any, in a big Strauss song like this. It's all about schwung, and schwung means the movement like this, a flow, a flow of sound. May I ask how old you are? 21. Okay. <laughs> For 21 years old, you've got great schwung. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is lovely. Um, let's work back a little bit. Yes. Can you, can you start me again on the last page? Und beschwast er in die Bösen. And think about infusing even those eighth notes with as much energy as you do the quarter notes. And, a and then when you get to the No, you do not. <laughs> Take a nice big breath before. Hi, hi, hi. Even if you if you have to breathe, breathe after the second hi, mm -hmm. but don't interrupt those two gorgeous, okay. schwungy ones. Start at the top of the page for me, please. You can 
fix that. I can. How are you going to do it? Breathe. Breathe. And what are you going to do on the G? Onsets. Highly, highly. It has just as much energy as the one that came before it. Even though the word is highly, we can't go. We can't do that. Highly, okay. highly. Just go right straight through it, okay? Awesome. Uh, can you give? Start again. Start that that page again. Um, yeah. It's beautiful over there. <laughs> it's okay. I can make that even more fun for you. Don't worry about saying Heilig, 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 Heilig. Up there, you're allowed, right? Okay. And just think of it like we're again, we're throwing that frisbee. This is a nice big room. Heilig, Heilig, Yeah. All one long phrase. Good. Uh, 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 uh. Start at bis ich. Bis ich. Do you see where that is? Yes. Okay. Bis ich, was ich nie Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Ah, 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 ah. We can fix that. Just make that one long phrase. Ha! Huh? I don't want you to even think about it being two words. Heilig, heilig. And keep going. I think you don't even need to breathe there. Okay. So that would mean, heilig, heilig, on Herz dir sank. Yeah? Yes. Do that all in one. All right. Try it? Yes, you if you die, I'll pick you up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bis? Heilig, heilig. Oh, yeah, yeah, bis, bis, bis. Keep going. Engage, engage, engage. Go, 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 go. What's different about that for you? I kept the gas going. Hello. Yeah. Good, good. And I mean, when you get to a, a, a climactic phrase like that, how lucky are you to get to sing that <laughs> and to sing it that beautifully? So have a blast with that. Good. Now we're going to go back to the beginning. You thought you were done. <laughs> okay. So punctuation matters to me. That doesn't mean I want you to say, ja, du weißt es, but ja, du weißt es. Give me just a little comma there. Teure Seele, dass ich fern von dir mich quäle. Again, keep your foot on the gas. Good. Start again, please. Du weißt es. You have to engage from the very, very first sound you make. You can't go, hia, hia, immediately with the vowel. Hia. Yeah, good. And breathe early. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Again, please, thank you. Breathe now. Good. Good, wait a second. Das ich dir. No, das ich fern von dir. Yes, das ich fern von dir mich quälen. Elongate those vowels. Uh, and okay, good. Yeah, start, can you just start there? Das ich. A 
second. I know that now I know what I was missing in that phrase. I miss some some voice. Kvela. Aha and fern. Fern von. Fern von. And you can put the shadow vowel in if you want. Das ich fern von dir. Mich kvela. Kve is voiced. Okay? Good. Start there again. Das ich. That being said, I don't need your whole tongue to go. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Fern, tip of the tongue. Fern. Fern. Exactly. Okay, you can do that. Good. Mich kwe, mich kwe, mich kwe, mich kwe. Yeah, you don't have to blow out all the air, but mich kwe. Exactly, and I need to hear that kwe um, voiced, that kwe v v v v v. Mich kwelen, mich kwelen. It's a sh in the front. Mich kwelen. There you go. Once more. Hang on a second. Das ich fern von dir. Mich quäle, mich quäle. Just get right through it and get to the kwe. Mich quäle. Das. Das ich fern von dir. Mich quäle. Now you're making up words. Okay. Von dir. Von dir. Mich quäle. Yes. Das ich fern, sing it for me a cappella. Das ich fern von mir dir mich quäle. Yes, that's exactly right. Exactly. Once more. Das ich fern von mir mich quäle. Second, what is the verb? Einst hielt dich der Freiheit sicher. Once held I the freedom cup. Exactly. So, which word is the verb? Held. Auf Deutsch. Einst hielt. Genau. Genau. That means you cannot schmice over it because it's the verb. <laughs> she likes that. Nishmeisen, which means don't schmear over it. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. Um, so start there again, the bar before, please, if you don't mind. Can you, can you give me the end of the first word? What is it? Einst, einst hielt ich. So romantic, isn't it? Einst hielt ich. Einst hielt ich. It means one time, one time I held. Once I held. Mm -hmm. Einst hielt ich der Freiheit sicher. That's pretty magical words. Yeah. I need you to give me a lot of juice on all those words, okay? okay. One bar before, please. Thank you. You've already done, you've already mastered the hardest phrase of the piece, right? So now we are at uh, Und du segnetest den Trank. Yeah? Yes. Und du segnetest den Trank. Not eat, 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 but wah, 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 wah. Exactly. Yeah, good. Uh, let's start there. Big, big, big. Open it up. Make the space before we breathe into the vowel shape that we want to say. So we don't go. We have. It's already there when the air wants to come out. Not. But. 
OK。OK，OK，Ready、okay. okay. go。One bow. Wait, wait, wait. Do it again. You're going right. One bow. Yes. Good. Now I can minimize zegnetest. 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 Yes, exactly. Do that. Yes. Keep going, keep going. Now easy. Big breath, big breath, big breath. Go, 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 go. Now slow, slow this down. Slow it down. No, 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 no! The the bar off, please. Yes, yes, beautiful, beautiful. Where was that voice when you started? I get it. I get it. But do you see what happens when you plug in and and again? Connecting and finding legato energizes and gets the body connected in a way that the phrases mean something and they have a direction.、Mm -hmm. Excellent. One bow. Practice that all the time. Yes. I <laughs> okay. Good. Excellent. Bravo. Now we have Sara. Hello. You look like a Despina. <laughs> I guess that's a good sign. <laughs> It is a good sign, considering. <laughs> I'm Sarah Holmes, and I'll be singing "In Uomini in Soldati" from Così Van Tutte. By? By Mozart. And what what's the name of the character who sings this? Despina. Despina, and she is? She is the maid in the household. Yes, and as we all know, it's the maid who has all the information, <laughs> and the maid who makes everything happen. Right? <laughs> the maid did it. Okay, good. Now, have you sung this a lot? I have. Yeah. Have、I've、you done been, the role? No,、okay. I've been singing it. I started working on it in August,、um, and I just used it for my graduate auditions. Awesome. Good. Excellent. Thank、you. 
Did we mention that Despina is a sassy maid? <laughs> She's very sassy. Very sassy. Very sassy. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, you said amyam per comodo how many times? Twelve. <laughs> what does amyam per comodo mean? It means let's love. Let us love for vanity and convenience. Exactly. Which it, translated into Despina let's speak. Sleep <laughs> let's sleep around. Let's just do, let's just, let's be frivolous. Because the first thing you say in uomini in soldati per uh, sperare fedeltà means? Uh, in men and in soldiers, in sarcastically, you expect fidelity. Right. So in the beginning, because, because you're setting this up, mm -hmm. I wouldn't laugh at, at the idea quite yet. Okay. I would say in uomini, in soldati, sperare fedeltà. <laughs> Sperare. Then you can start getting the sarcasm into it. Okay. I think play it straight at the beginning. Okay. Um, this is one of those arias that's just chirpy. Chirpy, chirpy, chirpy. I used to sing the Dorbella aria for auditions all the time. And it's another kind of yelly, chirpy kind of, she's just sort of angry. And I sang it for a lot of auditions until finally someone said to me, Please don't sing that in auditions anymore. We don't want to be yelled at for three minutes. So I took that out of my rotation and put it, I don't know, some Serlina aria or something. But the thing with an, ar with an aria like this, I think it's perfectly fine for you. But I think that we, we have to find moments of beauty in it and we have to find moments of legato in it. And we have to find, we have to change it up a little because, because otherwise it's three minutes of right? Not that yeah. that's how you sound. You don't sound like that. <laughs> However, a lot of that has to do with language. Yeah? So, it's all, it all goes by so fast. Di passa simile, son tutti quanti. That's, for instance, a phrase that you can do more legato. Um, we get in the habit of, of imitating sort of the piano, what the piano is doing. But if you'll notice, she's also got a, fra a long phrase over that, over that, um, a phrase line over that phrase. So can you start again for me mm -hmm. and sing it? Put Despina behind the altar for a second okay. and um, let's just see what Sarah has to say. Okay? okay? Yeah. Good. Start again, please. Now, even there, sperare fedeltà, it's a kinka, kinka kind of phrase, but try to even it out as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Just uh, give her right before sperare, uh, the bar before. Yeah. Sperare fedeltà. Yes, ma'am. And now you can start getting a little into the. <laughs> Good, and if you do the laugh, which I think is very cute, give us more of the note first before you go into the laugh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in Insolda. Where are we? The last one. So. I'm going to try and address that E instead of E. Little taller vowel. That's it. And even the last time you say it, the last time you say it, because it's the punchline, you can you can do that illegal thing, which is double the consonants that aren't actually doubled. Not double them, maybe just accent each syllable. Mm -hmm. Fe delta, duh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, start the same place again. And I have to tell you, that makes a lot of difference in your I voice. Feel it. Holy moly! You just <laughs> filled up your whole head. Yeah. Good. Even though you're not a tenor, sometimes they say tenors have resonance where their brains should be. But I'm not going to go there. You have obviously lots of brains and resonance. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> e. <laughs> 
fait. <laughs> and again, keep the space. Non vi fa di sentire carità. Di pasta. Same thing. Di pasta. Di pasta semile. Yeah. Uh, start with that shape up there already. So you don't have to go. Yes. Good. Now, if you do too much, we can't understand it. Okay. So, do something like that, but don't don't pinch off every word because okay. then we can't understand it. Good. Give her a bar before. Can you? I, I hate to ask you this because I do this myself, but can you can you try it without the N? You're going. Can you just start with? Just start right on it with a D. Mm -hmm. Okay, once more. Yeah, but then, then, then make the vowel a little, yes, let the vowel be a little bit longer. Good. Sono tutti quanti. Now we need to examine in that where the doubles are and where the doubles aren't. Okay, because when we're trying to, to enunciate and articulate, sometimes we, we cut the syllables a little bit short. The vowels become a little bit short. So, where are we? Vocingannevoli, uh, vezzi, those are both double. Vocingannevoli, have we gotten there yet? Yes, yes, yes. Bugiardi uh, son le primarie, lor qualità son le prima. Those are all singles. In noi non amano, not amano. Yeah. Uh, che lor diletto, poi ci dispregiano, negan ci affetto. Ne val da barbari chieder pietà, not pietà. Even if we want to emphasize the word pietà, we do it with the vowel or the or the initial consonant, not the middle one. Okay, can you start for? Less in between non and amano. In noi non amano. That. Uh, uh, uh. Too much. Too much. Okay. It's a habit, isn't it? I think it is. I know. I know. I understand it very well. No. 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 Excellent. Yeah. It's just, it's just about making that vowel longer. Okay. No. 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 Yes. Good, because you see what he's done. You see what he's done. This is why Mozart is so brilliant. Ino e non amano che lor diletto. Poi ci dispregiano ne gagni affetto. So it's long, short, long, short. Make us know that. Okay. Okay, cool. The same spot? Yeah. Okay. Ino e non amano che lor diletto. Poi ci dispregiano. Uh, uh, uh. There you go. Naval da barbari, and it's barbari. Yes. Naval da barbari. 
Pieta. Yes. Yeah. It's just about, again, making that first vowel longer. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I just got to say, I'm loving this now. Now I know who you are. First of all, we get into the character. Even in auditions, we get into the character. But I, this tells me more about, even tells me more about Despina. Because as much as reluctant as we are to admit it, opera is a lot about singing. <laughs> and it's about singing well. We can be as cute as we want in the character. We can, we can give the affectations. We can do whatever we want to do. But at the end of the day, it gets down to good singing. And this is good singing. Excellent. Good job. Start there at Neval da Barbari Chieder Pieta. Pieta. Make those vowels nice and long. Okay, this one he broke up with a little rest. Sorry. Yeah, he's got a little rest in there. Put it in there? Yes. Put in there? Do put the rest in there. Mozart wrote it, we do it. Uh, can you start at Neval da Barbari? I think, I think your tongue is getting mixed up and it thinks that there's an R at the end of da. It's da Barbari, not da Barbari. Yes. Good. Start with there again, please. Uh, do you see what you did? I did. Isn't that funny? You didn't tell your tongue to do that. No. I know. Mind of its own. Go ahead. Okay. Now, why does he do that? Um, to emphasize giving, don't give them pity. To emphasize which word? Pity. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just start there on Kieder Pieta. And now. There's only one T in Pieta. Yeah. But as, as she says it three times, right? So the first time is Kieder Pieta. She says it a million times, but um, Kieder Pieta. And now Kieder Pieta. Oh, brother. <laughs> but you got to make us understand why you're doing that little flourish. Okay. It's you gotta be kidding me. Right? Okay, so start at one more time. Never more kidder pieta. Okay. It's gonna be stuck in my head all day. do it with just one T. Yes, but I that was it. awesome. That was awesome. I love how you threw yourself into it. Okay. Completely unselfconsciously. This isn't about you. Yes. No, it's no. not. No, it's not. <laughs> one more time, same place. Thank you. And you know what? If you want to throw in a little Pietro, you can. Schmaltz. A little schmaltz. <laughs> more is more. Yes. Malefica razza indiscreta. What does that mean? Um, they're like indiscretions. Mm-hmm. Malefica. They're, malefic they're like 
evil indiscretions. Yes, they're, they're maleficence. Yes. Mm -hmm. So really, what she's just said is, uh, it's futile to ask these barbarians for pity. Let us females pay them back with equal money. This, these evil maleficents. So to pay them back, what are we going to do? We're going to not get involved. We'll love them, but only for today. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> so really, it's all about payback in Despina's world. She seriously has some issues. She's got baggage. She's, she's been harmed. <laughs> she has baggage. Okay, so. <clears throat> Pagiam o femmine du qual moneta, which means let's pay them back with, in their own kind. Mm -hmm. Let's do to them what they've done to us, basically. Questa uh, malefica razza indiscreta. So those are words that you can really dig into. So I would go, Pagiam o femmine du qual moneta. And here's how. Questa malefica razza indiscreta. Amiam per comodo per vanità. Amiam per comodo. And you got to say that ten different ways because you're saying it ten different times. Okay. So give us all the different ways that Despina and you can think about amiam per comodo per vanità. You can emphasize different words. You can do it at different dynamic levels. You can phrase it differently each time. But something, something that lets us know that there's a different thought attached to each one. Okay, cool. Pagiamo femmine du qual moneta. Pagiamo femmine du qual moneta. Questo mondo è figurato in discreta. Ogni un per modo per vanità. Ogni un per modo per vanità. Good. Now something different. Evil, secret and evil. That's not secret and evil. That's coquettish and funny. Try go go. Da, 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 da. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I think there needs to be one that's that's secret and evil. I'm yum per comodo per vanita. I'm in control here. I'm yum per comodo. And then I'm yum per comodo. Amiam per comodo. Eccolo, amiam per comodo. That's the fun part. And then the last one can be just big and gorgeous with long vowels. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, start for me um, the top of the last page. It's amiam per comodo per la 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 la. Amiam per comodo per la la. Okay. So start at the. You know where I am? Yes. Okay. Now go for it. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I was at the wrong one. That's okay, that's okay. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back to... Um, okay, let's go on, let's go on. <laughs> Start at the same place where we actually are. So uh, at the one before that. Now go for it. Go for it. Ah, good. Excellent, excellent. Now when you go up to those A's at the very end, give it uh, as much space as you can up through the back. Just, just do that one phrase for me. Okay. Let's go up the back, not. Try that. Almost think an O vowel up there. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, she's right. Okay. Oh, 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 that's the one, try again, same place, yes, good, good, and the more you can breathe before those high A's, the better off you'll be, good, excellent, bravo, bravo, excellent,
Excellent. Sing it. Sing it. Always sing it. It's Mozart. <laughs> Good. Oh my goodness gracious. I feel like I've been singing every single one of these arias with these people. I'm exhausted. Okay, and now we have Christopher. Yay. Hi. Hi. Do I just introduce myself? Sorry? Do I I'll introduce myself? Okay. Yes, please introduce Hi. yourself and I'm... tell us what you're going to sing. Will do. I am Christopher Bang, and I will be singing Avant de Quitter Salut from Gnod's Faust. Very good. Now, have you been singing this aria a long time, or is it new? Uh, I started about last August, and I sang it for a recital. Mm -hmm. So you've performed it? I have performed Excellent. it. Excellent. Yes. Do you speak French? Mm, I will try my best. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, no, but I sing French. Oh. Excellent. That would have been better. Good, good, good. Who is singing this? Sorry, should have asked you that before you put the mic down. Valentin. Valentin, and who is he? Uh, he is a soldier. He is brother to Margarita, who is the unfortunate. Yes, the unfortunate one. Marguerite. Yes. Okay, and what's happening here in this scene? In this scene, I am about to go off to war with my fellow soldiers, and I am praying to the goddess of the medallion, as well as just the god in general, to protect my sister while I am out at war. Good. Yes. Indeed. It's a bit of foreshadowing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's what makes opera grand. Good.
Bravo. Very beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful voice. Um, so, there's, I mean, I, there, there's a fine tuning, fine tuning, but obviously you feel this piece very deeply and you, you've um, incorporated the language very well and the phrasing is lovely. Uh, I think that, I think we can, we can make a little bit of contrast, you know, yes. how we want to do. Um, when you start, there's just a couple of French things. Um, pour écarter la mort, reste. reste. I heard a little reste. Reste, reste là, sur, sur mon cœur. Sur, sur mon cœur. There's no N in mon cœur. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I am right. <laughs> sur mon cœur. Mon cœur. Yeah, you don't want the tongue to come up in the back and touch it. You know, because what happens is we want to go mon cœur. Mon cœur. Right, right. Now try and say it without the N. Yes, yes, yes. It's a habit that you might have to work on a little bit to break because we, we get into these kinds of, again, the tongue sometimes has a mind of its own. So, uh... Can you just start for me again the aria part uh, at the top of avado kite? And I want this to be a nice. This is this is the beginning of the tune, right? This is the beginning of the part we all know. So I want you to settle into that tune from the very first note. Avado kite, c'est lieu. As smooth as you can and as prayerful as you can. Okay. Okay. I will also say that we don't need the medallion. You know? Because then what do you do with it? You stick it in your jacket. I mean, you know, put it in your pocket. It suddenly vanishes into thin air and we don't have it anymore. So it's not necessary. It can be, you can be singing to the top of that window and that can be your medallion. And you're just praying, you're praying to the God, whatever God that wants to be. Oh, Santa Medaille. It can just be out there in the ether. You don't have to like that. Have to be it doesn't have to be a physical thing. Exactly. Can you uh, so so in that in that vein? Can we just start the whole thing again, please? From the old sound. Yes. Sounds yeah, one bar. <clears throat> good, 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 good. That's a beautiful. Your your sound is so naturally gorgeous. I think you can be helped a tiny bit by, you know, we were talking a minute ago about breathing into the space that you yes. want to create. Oh, so it's already there. Good. Lift. Oh. Good, and now you can say a little more words for me now that you've found that gorgeous spot that you just started with. Now you can give me a little more words. Good, thank you. Same with avant, avant. Breathe into the space. Well, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Now I'm just going to guinea pig you, okay? Because I want to try an experiment. 
Uh, we are at Daigne. De Can you play the phrase for me, please? Daigne de tout danger. Daigne de tout danger. Now, I want you to sing this phrase, and I want you to think about lifting your cheeks just a little bit. Daigne de tout danger. Do you see what I'm doing? I've got cheeks lifted. Daigne de tout danger. Just as an experiment, I want to see what happens. Okay. Can you just start there? Think about it. You can use your fingers if you want. Daigne de tout danger. Toujours, toujours la protéger. Yeah, 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 yeah. How does that feel? <laughs> a lot of times when they say it's easier, they think it's wrong. I'm not working hard enough. Do, do you like the sound better? Yeah? It's more sort of present? It's more sort of present, say they. Good. Okay. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Keep, keep keeping those cheeks up. And when in doubt, pucker along with it. Uh, d uh, start there again. Daniel de tu. You know what that did on that E? On the toujours, it focused the sound and it had a direction instead of toujours, which is what you were doing before. Yes. Right? Yep. Toujours. Yes, keep doing that. Right there. Now I would like to have a little more zhuzh on Sherry. She's so dear to you. Si cette sœur si Sherry, si he Sherry. It's also a triplet, so let us know that. Cette jour, cette sœur. Cette sœur, si chérie. Give me more vowel, more vowel. Chérie. Cette, cette sœur. Cette sœur, si chérie. Yes. To what? Don. G. No N. De tout danger. Danger. Excellent. That's it exactly. Can you just do that last phrase, please? Daigne de protéger de tout danger. Yes. Especially here. And the more you can go to an E up there, maybe a little easier. Not nasal, but just a, a little more closed E. And this will help too. D'une uh, triste. Triste. Mm-hmm. Délivré. Dink, dink, can you give him a bar? Délivré d'une triste passée. J'ai cherché la gloire et la gloire dans son désert. This is a lot of words. La gloire au sein des ennemis. Au sein. Au sein. Which means the chest, the breast. Right? La gloire au sein. Au sein, au sein des, des ennemis. Des ennemis. Yes. So, can, can you do that? I'll let you look at it. Can you do from here to here, just saying the vowels and no consonants? Ah, slowly. No, no consonants. Ah, ah, wa, o, sa, wa, wa, a, a. 
Exactly. And they thought it was easy. Can you start there? Okay, once more. Yeah, yeah. One more time, I think you can get it right this time. Do you want to look at it? Take it to your teacher. Okay. <laughs> Le premier. Keep going. Le premier. Okay. And go. Le premier. It's melee. E e e. That's that's right. Do it once more. Le premier. Le premier. Le premier. Good, because this is a very military part. J'irai comba, no M. Comba. That's right. And when you go, I want it to be like marching. I want it to be that articulate. Not ah, ah, Okay, start right there. J'irai comba. J'irai comba. I hate it when they say, it hurts. No, I'm glad it doesn't hurt. Very good. Beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Bravo. So now we have time for Q&A, I'm told. Does anybody have any Qs? I don't know if I have any As, but we'll see. Anything you want. Anything you want. Yes, ma'am. She asked how important it is to know the language. Well, that's interesting. Um, because it's important. It's, it's important to know where the nouns and verbs are and the adjectives and the conjunctions and the articles, all that stuff. I, you don't have to be fluent in a language to be able to sing it well. I mean, a lot of these people aren't, aren't fluent. I'm, I'm not fluent in every language that I sing. However, it, when you're singing a, a song, like an art song, you got to understand the poetry and the ins and outs of the poetry. And as we'll see, um, lots of times you, you look up a translation online 
and you think that that's sufficient. But usually those translations are just poetic translations. You have to know what every word means. Whether it's, you know, a preposition, that it's not that important, or if it's a verb, which is very important. Um, I always found that, I started singing in Germany and Austria before I was very fluent in German, and I had a German director who would say, tell me to do something, and he would say, quickly around the table, in German, because German is a weird construction. The verb always comes at the end. So I would know how to do it and where to do it, but I wouldn't know what to do because the verb had some strange, you know, mutation that I didn't understand. So I faked it a lot. Don't tell anybody that. Just between us friends. No, but you, you know, you can always figure it out. However, it's, it's important to understand what you're saying and what anybody is saying to you. Any, anytime you're in a scene in a Russian opera, if you don't happen to speak Russian, you gotta know what everybody around you is saying, so that if somebody just says, you know, my, I was just killed in battle, you don't go, ah. You know, you have to have the right reaction. <laughs> you have to show that you understand what people are saying to you. All right, yes, yes. She asked, what's my favorite part of doing these master classes? When the light bulb goes off, any teacher will tell you that. When the light bulb goes off and you go, oh, like when he said, oh, well, that's easier. Yeah, that's my favorite part. When I feel like I've been effective and I've been able to help somebody figure something out or unlock something. Yes. Do it. Uh, she said, what would I recommend to people applying for study abroad programs? I think that it's, it's really valuable. Uh, I don't know necessarily the programs that you're talking about, but I think that it's, it's, it's very valuable to travel, first of all, and to understand other cultures, secondly, and to uh, familiarize yourself with languages. Anytime you, and to understand that, that even the musical culture is different in another culture. Um, in another country. I spent a lot of time in, in France and Germany and Austria and they do things differently there. And it's wonderful and it informs how I do things anywhere because you always are taking gems, little bits of jewelry from every culture and, and making it your own. And I think it's really valuable if you can do it. Yes. How do I deal with nervousness, nervousness before performance, she asks. Well, a little bit of nervousness is good because it keeps you on your game. If you're, if you've, I find that if I have adrenaline, my high notes are always a little bit better. Because somehow, you know how, how some of these young singers today found energy over here and it gave them energy over here? You know, it, it's, it all becomes sort of organic. So sometimes a little, a little adrenaline is, is your friend. Um, I've tr I, the only time I have really bad sort of uncomfortable nervousness is if I've got some sort of vocal distress or I'm sick or something like that and I have to go on stage and not sure what will come out. And to be clear, I did lose my voice in a performance of The Marriage of Figaro in France one time during Voi Que Sapete. Lost my voice completely. By the end of it, I was going, Voi Que Sapete. In a performance, and you know after Carabino sings that aria what the Countess's next line is. Bravo, che bella voce, io non sapevo che cantaste si bene. She says, bravo, what a beautiful voice. I had no idea you sang so well. <laughs> the woman singing the Countess could hardly get the line out without laughing. Yeah, I didn't stay around for curtain calls with that one. It, it, it got so bad that I had to whistle the fourth act um, finale. I did, I was whistling. Didn't stay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Normally for me now it's about forgetting words. I get nervous about forgetting words. Um, but really the only way you can combat stuff like that is just to be as prepared as possible. And, you know, sometimes that means preparing your mental roadmaps. Because it's not just about, you know, the rote memorization of words, but it's like I'm trying to convey this thought and these are the words that convey that thought. You get pictures in your brain of what kind of ideas you're trying to string together. Yeah. Yes? How 
how do I allow myself to be immersed in a character while staying aware of the vocal mechanism? Um, at a certain point, you're not thinking technique all the time anymore. Hopefully. <laughs> that allows you to uh, be free and, as I, as I love to say and do, make choices as the character. So it's not about how I run across the stage, it's about how Carabino runs across the stage or Octavian or Dorabella or whoever, you know. It's about the choices that they make and I'm just there to facilitate it. Um, however, that doesn't mean that there aren't times when you really have to think about what you're doing vocally. And you just sort of incorporate it, you know. You go, oh, here comes that phrase. I have to do this on that phrase, and so you just do it, you know. It, it all becomes one big fabric, really. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite that you perform? Ah, uh, that's like saying, who's your favorite kid? <laughs> um, normally it's the one I'm doing at that time, but... Uh, I'm not doing one right now, so I will say. For a long time, it was Rosen Cavalier, because Octavian is like everything, you know. Um, and then I stopped singing Rosen Cavalier, and then I did a lot of Les Troyes, the Trojan War epic opera by Berlioz. And I sort of loved that character so much, Dido, the Queen of Carthage, because she's sort of everything. She, she gets to be a very well-loved leader of her country, a queen, and then she gets to be like this completely besotted young girl in love. And then at the end, she gets to be a vengeful, angry woman who was betrayed, and then she kills herself. So what else is there, really? It's everything. And the great, some of the greatest music ever written, so. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. You fake it. She says, what do you do when you understand the lyrics to a, to a piece, but you're not really feeling it? Like, I had to, I, this is a good case in point. I always use this one as an example. I sang a song on a big French recital. In fact, it's recorded under the Erato label available on iTunes. Um, it's, a, it's a whole disc of French songs. And there's a song on it called Les Cigales. I think it's by Bizet. It, it's, it's, about, it's about crickets. I wasn't that invested in the cricket world, but I created a story in my head to go along with why they were so special and why they warranted a song for me to sing about them and perform it all over the world. So you got, you know, you got, you sort of have to embellish it in your mind so that when you sing, les cigales, les bestiales, it's just the most fabulous thing in the world at that moment. Yeah, you got to be an actor. <laughs> That's the one that always pops into my mind. I don't know why. Hello. Hi there. Um, what do you do when you find yourself too emotionally, deeply invested in a song, but you got to sing it anyway, you want to sing it? How do you make that separation without being fake? I've been in that situation many, many times. Um, I let the feeling come, and I just have to channel it in a different way. I have to channel it in a way that doesn't give me the lump in the throat, the literal lump in the throat, because I have to use that lump in my throat to actually sing. Um, I have channeled it up so it sort of just lives up, it lives from here up, so, you know, a tear, I get a teary-eyed. I let it, I let the feeling come. And then sometimes I will, I will admit that I acknowledge the feeling and I know what it is. And then I sort of put it back here and sing the song while remembering the feeling and trying to communicate the feeling without it being actually part of my um, breath at that moment. That's the best way I can describe it. But I don't, it's a, it's a sort of detachment. It's a slight detachment, not from the feeling, but from, from the physical manifestation of the feeling, I think. Yeah. Anybody else? Is it lunchtime?
Oh, one more. I sure did. Very valuable. How valuable were my experiences at the Manhattan School of Music? Well, I went there straight from Texas, as green as green can be, and uh, I was thrown into, I'd already gotten a master's degree in Texas, so I kind of went up there to have something to do in New York, to have an excuse to be in New York. And I enrolled in an artist diploma program, because I already had a master's. And then, like halfway through the first, or after the first year, my advisor said, you know, you're only like three hours away from another master's, a different kind of master's. And I said, well, okay, let's do that. Why not? What it gave me, of course what it gave me, was an exposure to New York, a reason to be in New York. And I was around all of the, okay, now I'll tell you my Manhattan School of Music story. I was around all these kids who had grown up in New York and had grown up going to the Met. That was not my experience. Um, so when I got there, I was kind of intimidated by them. And early on, in October of my first year there, I got called upon to do a master class with a very famous mezzo-soprano called Mignon Dunn. Y'all know Mignon. And uh, so I got up there, and I had my little outfit on. I was going to sing Carabino. I was going to sing Non So Piu. And so I had on the split skirt. <laughs> Looks like a dress, acts like pants. So because I was singing Carabino, who's a boy. So I was up here, and I went, Not so beautiful, cosa son, cosa faccio, orifo, corazon, origaccio. And she stopped me, stop, 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 stop. She says, take off those high heels. I took off those high heels. And she says, now, I want you to run up and down this aisle, and I want you to grab people by the collar and tell them Carabino's story. And I thought, holy moly, I can't do that. I'm just a girl from Texas. And these are all my peers and my fellow students who have grown up at the Met, and they, they, they know everything, and I don't know anything, and I can't do that. I'll look like a fool. Or I can, you know, I can just do it and I'll kind of make a joke out of it and halfway do it. And then this other part of my brain said, what have you got to lose? These people don't know you. you this, this is New York City. You can reinvent yourself 100 times a day. Just go do it dare to do it. So I listened to the second one, and I jumped off the stage, and I ran up and down the aisles, and I grabbed my friends by the collars, and I said, No so più cosa son, cosa faccio? Are they fuoco rosso? Are they gaccio? Ogni donna cantare di colore, ogni donna mi fa papitar. And all of them came into it with me. You know, they, they jumped on the bandwagon, because they were imagining themselves in my position too, so they were being very supportive of me having to do this really uncomfortable thing. That moment, changed my life. And I, obviously, 40 years later, I'm still telling the story. Is it 40 years? Not quite 40 years. <laughs> 37. Anyway, I'm still telling the story because every time I go on stage, I think about that. Who cares? I can reinvent myself as many times as I want. I just have to serve the music. And I just have to serve the character and the composer and the librettist. I don't care what I look like. And that's part of the commitment to whether it's a poem, an art song, an opera aria, or the Queen of Carthage. It's just about how deeply you let it get in you to the exclusion of everything else at that moment. That's the first thing that Manhattan School of Music did for me. So, anybody else? Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So, bon appétit! Is it lunchtime? Almost. Oh, almost. Sorry, not yet. Don't get comfortable. I'll tell them what's happening. Okay, something's happening. I think it is lunchtime. However, our, the, for those of you who ordered lunch. Hello, hello, hello? It's not here yet. Her mic isn't on. Oh, I'll talk louder. Um, the lunch hasn't arrived yet. Apparently, the caterer got lost. So, um, it should be here soon, but um, uh, for those of you who ordered lunch, uh, but we will take a break now until one o'clock, and hopefully um, it should show up very soon. So thank you. But also, I just wanted to say this has been a fantastic class. I really enjoyed it. Everyone sang so well, and thank you, Susan. I want to applaud our singers because you guys did such a great job. Bravo, all of you. Thank you. Oh, where'd she go? Here she is. Okay, so we'll see you back here at 2.30.
one o'clock. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Catherine.